Hello, this is Don Downey with Forest Metrics. I'm going to talk a little bit about setting up custom plot level data. So for instance, in a cruise, you're always going to be tallying some timber. But what if you have to do some regen sampling where you have to tally seedlings and saplings? What if you have to capture additional information at the plot level, such as how is my access or what is the slope or are there any management restrictions or what is my canopy closure, etc.? All of that is available under custom plot level data. So we started our launch page and we go first to settings and then we go to this other tab. Now here, what you'll see is this is mostly plot level data where plot level fields. So you have 14 fields that you can set up in any manner that you need as long as it's a single value. As in, we could set these up, say I'm just recording, how is my regen in terms of is it good or bad? Is it adequate? Is it inadequate? So we can just say adequate, adequate but suppressed, inadequate, etc. So at each plot, I will be able to select one of those values to assign for my subjective evaluation of how my region is. I could say something like invasives, yes, no, if I needed to just note the presence or absence of invasives. I could have restrictions. So I could, I could say, well, my restrictions are uh, it's too ledgy or it's too wet or, uh, well, you get the idea. Now you can also set up point checklists. So checklists are where you have a, a certain field, say, let's look at invasives a different way. We can set up a checklist. We don't wanna just say, do we have invasives, yes or no? We might have multiple species there. So we can set up a list for invasives and here we would, we would list all of our invasives. So we'll say buckthorn, we'll say uh, uh, kudzu, et cetera. So at every plot, you have the ability to check off any number of those species in your list. You also have plot level tables. Now this is where you have to get really deep. This is where you have, you might say, well, I'm, I'm, we'll keep the invasives uh, example going. We have certain invasives that all require different treatments. They have different levels of severity to this infestation. So we go to our plot tables and we can set up a table. You have six tables that are related to the plot. You have two field tables. You have three field, four field. Now what this means, let's just say I had a three field table, okay? I'm gonna use this for invasives. Now, what are, the, what are the attributes that I'm gonna be collecting on each of these invasives? I'm gonna call a species, maybe I'll call a severity level, and maybe I'll call a treatment. Now, all of this data, you'll be able to export in an in a Excel spreadsheet, and it'll have all your lat long data. You could then use that as an attribute table so for a, for a shape file. So I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna list all my potential species here and my severity level. It's a emerging population, it's a moderate infestation, or it's just totally infested. And lastly, what would my treatment be? Well, here I need to do some foliar or some basal bark treatment, etc. I'll say cut stump. So at each plot, I might have multiple invasives, and for each of those, I would be calling a species, what is the severity of the infestation, and what would my treatment regime be? And again, this is the sort of thing you could then import into GIS. You could map that population. So that's an example of how these custom plot tables can work. Now, other plot level data. So regen, now let's just say you have to sample regen. You have to, you have to quantify seedlings and saplings per acre by species. You turn that on and that will, well, it'll enable you to do just that. You would call a species, you'd call a size class, whether it's a seedling or a sapling of a different size and a count. And if you touch on that regen, you'll see you can change your plot size for regen. I'll say one two fifty if it, 
one two fiftieth acre. Now, let's say you had to take additional details. In addition to species size, class, and count, let's say you had to evaluate how the browse, you know, how, how the deer browse is. And we could have values of uh, none, yes, moderate, etc. So when you're tallying regen, you're going to tally a species, a size class, a browse level, and a count. Understory and coarse woody material. This gets really deep as far as where you're working with multiple subplots by by plot, as well as multiple observations. So if you have a, you know several coarse woody debris uh, transects at a plot, and within each of those you have multiple coarse woody debris observations, these can all be turned on and set up the same way. And you'd be calling a species, and then you know maybe large end diameter, small end diameter, etc. And then lastly, we have some other eco. Now this is uh, uh, based on the Audubon program Forestry for the Birds, where you're looking at things like fine woody material piles, coarse woody material piles, how much soft mass do I have? Uh, what's my uh, vertical structure? How's my horizontal structure uh, distribution? We can turn that on and that will surface a tally page at the plot level where you will make those calls. Again, everything on this table, on, on this page, you can export in Excel format for post analysis. Nothing here gets analyzed within Forest Metrics Pro. Everything can be compiled in a spreadsheet, exported in XLS format, and then you can either you know bring it into GIS or do post processing on your own. Lastly, a couple, couple little things that we couldn't really fit anywhere else. Statistics. You can indicate what your goal sampling error is on your timber basal area. Um, at a given confidence interval. And so this is going to tell you as you go, your sampling error is X percent, say it's 18 percent. And if your goal is 15, it'll tell you how many additional plots you need in order to get to that goal of 15 percent. So I could say 80 percent confidence interval and I want to be plus or minus 20 percent on my sampling error. That just happens automatically. You can you can look at it or ignore it as you choose. Hide plots. This is a setting where, let's say you have 300 plots in a stand, in a single stand, and every time that you need to go to a plot, you're going to have to scroll through that list of plots in that stand. If you indicate hide plots, this is simply going to hide them from that pop-up list. So as your day goes on, as your week goes on, that list is going to get smaller, uh, a nice psychological boost, as well as reducing how much you have to scroll through long lists. And lastly, auto-locate. This is a handy feature where when you add the first tree at a plot, it will automatically capture that plot location. Otherwise, you just have to remember to do that manually if you want your data geo-referenced. I prefer to just have it automatically capture that so I never end up forgetting to capture my plot locations. And that's it for custom plot level data. Thanks and hope you enjoy the rest of our videos to give you a deeper look into Forest Metrics Pro.